All right, howdy folks. It's me again, Randy Ray, the literary Texan coming to you. Well, I always want to say live, but this is pre-recorded from Driftwood Ranch. And today I have a review of a Thomas Dish novel called Camp Concentration from 1968, which means it was published two years before I was born. So, uh, Unlike Steve Donahue, I am not terminally 28. I'm 53. And this is the kind of old school science fiction novel that I used to really enjoy. And forgive me for looking away for a second here because I've got some notes that I made because I didn't want to forget anything. But, uh, so anyway, Thomas Dish, or Thomas M. Dish, if you haven't heard of him, is probably most famous to people of our generation for The Brave Little Toaster which was made into a children's film. I used to work at a telemarketing agency. I hate to admit that. But uh, we sold the Disney Channel there. And uh, one of our big selling points was that the Brave Little Toaster was always on the Disney Channel. Hugely popular. But uh, I've mentioned in previous videos that I'm a big fan of uh, fantasy and science fiction magazine. One of the reasons <clears throat> that I'm a fan, excuse me, that I'm such a big fan of the fantasy and science fiction magazine is because it helps me find authors I might have overlooked. It helps me find books to read. And that is how I came across Thomas M. Dish this time. Although I was aware of him before. He was born in 1940 and killed himself in 2008. And I've been going back through fantasy and science fiction magazines from... 1982, which is the year my mother bought me a subscription. And I bought a year's worth of those. You know, my original copies are all gone now. So uh, God only knows when and how that happened. Um, it's lost in the feeble old memory. But uh, there was a short story in this one called Understanding Human Behavior. And I wanted to read a little of this to you. Uh, the subtitle for the story is called Understanding Human Behavior, A Romance of the Rocky Mountains. And uh, and I thought this story was so delightful, but, uh, but I'm just going to read this to you. He would wake up each morning with a consciousness clear as the boulder sky, a sense of being on the same wavelength exactly as the sunlight. Innocence, bland dreams, a healthy appetite, there were glories that issued directly from his having been erased. Of course, there were some corresponding disadvantages. His job, monitoring the terminals of a driving convenience center, could get pretty dull, especially on days when no one drove in for an hour or so at a stretch. And even at the busiest times, it didn't provide much opportunity for human contact. He envied the waitresses in restaurants and the drivers of buses, their chance to say hello to real life customers. Away from work, it was different. He didn't feel the same hunger for socializing. That, in fact, was the major disadvantage of having no past life, no established preferences, no identity in the usual sense of a history to attack his name to. He just didn't want anything very much. And that's how that story opens. Uh, I like his style, he's real direct. Uh, the sentences flow really naturally. It's real easy to read. It's almost like the reading equivalent of eating ice cream. Um, so, um, a little more about Thomas M. Ditch before I get into my full camp concentration review. He won a single Yugo during his lifetime, but he was nominated for two others. I recently read, sometime within the last year, a later novel of his called The M.D., a horror story, which like camp concentration, is based on, inspired by uh, the tale of Faust, which I may or may not be pronouncing correctly, because, uh, you know, really I'm just kind of an old hillbilly who likes to read. Uh, he was also a poet and a notorious atheist, and he was considered a part of the new wave of science fiction in the um, 60s where they were experimenting a lot with the form. Um, a lot of the poetry stuff shows up in Camp Concentration, which was not my favorite aspect of the book, but I'll get into that in a little bit. The most interesting thing about this book to me 
is that, you know, I guess back in the day, a lot of these science fiction writers knew each other. So Philip K. Dick and Thomas M. Dish were friends, but if you know anything about Philip K. Dick, you know he was on amphetamines and was a little bit crazy. So apparently, the year after Camp Concentration was published, Philip K. Dick wrote a letter to the FBI to let them know that there were coded messengers to the, the bad guys or the enemies um, in the novel Camp Concentration, which you know obviously is a bar bizarre claim. I don't think anything ever came of it, uh, except Thomas M. Dish didn't know about it until much later. And I think at some point he got his revenge on Philip K. Dick by uh, including Dick as a character in a short story and uh, writing him in hell. So I don't remember all the details about that, but what a dubious claim to uh, distinction right there. Your novel is uh, the subject of a letter from uh, Philip K. Dick to the FBI. Anyway, this is an old copy of this book. This is from 1968, and I figured that out. That means this book is 55 years old. So I was reading it the other day, and I'm not particularly hard on books, I don't think, but suddenly this part of the book and this part of the book came off, and the only part of the cover that was still intact was this little centerpiece here. And God knows that didn't last long. You know, I'm a big beefy guy and I guess I'm fairly strong and don't know my own strength, but it just tore right off. Um, I repaired it with scotch tape. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But anyway, I don't even know if that's the appropriate way to repair a vintage paperback, but I'd rather have the cover on than off. So let me tell you a little bit about this book. It was originally serialized in a British science fiction magazine called New Worlds in 1967. And this would be a very appropriate novel to serialize because it is written in the form a, of a, a journal. Uh, the main character and the narrator, the, the, the character writing the journal, is Louis Sanchetti, who is imprisoned because he's a conscientious objector in the universe of this particular novel, Robert McNamara is the president. There is a war going on and conscientious objectors go to prison. Um, so the novel takes place as his diary and um, it includes quite a bit of poetry. The narrator is a poet and an author. So uh, they've included quite a bit of poetry in here. A lot of it was really above my head to tell you the truth as far as the poetry goes. There are sections in the book where, I, spoiler alert, okay? I don't know how to review a book without spoiling some of it anyway. But uh, the main character is writing a journal, but at some point he starts to get really smart. Some of the other characters start to get really smart because there's an STD that's got a mutation that they've injected these prisoners with, which make them incredibly smart. And they're trying to find a military advantage by making these inmates really, really smart. The problem with it is that uh, nine months after they're injected with this STD, they die. That's their lifespan. So you get to be super smart, but you trade in the rest of your life for it practically. And most of the Faust references, I understand, come from Dr. Faustus, Dr. Faustus by Thomas Mann or Thomas Mann whom I haven't read, but you know that's the wonderful thing is about books. When you learn a little bit more about a book, suddenly there's another book to read. But, you know, I would also like to read part of this to you just to give you an example of the writing style. And this is from the journal. It's fairly early in the book. It's on page 19. June the 2nd, I am being held prisoner. I have been kidnapped from the prison where I by law belong and brought to a prison in which I do not belong. Legal advice is denied me. My protests are ignored with maddening blandness. Not since the playground tyrannies of childhood have the rules of the game been so utterly and arrogantly abrogated and I am helpless to cope. To whom shall I complain? 
There is not even a chaplain in this place, I'm told. Only God hears me now and my guards. In Springfield, I was a prisoner for a stated reason, for a fixed term. Here, wherever that may be, nothing is stated. There are no rules. I demand incessantly to be returned to Springfield, but the only answer I receive is to have waved in my face the slip of paper that Smead signed approving my transfer. Smead would have approved my being gassed if it had come to that. Damn Smead. Damn these new anonymities in their spiff, black, unidentified uniforms. Damn me for having been fool enough to place myself in a situation where this sort of thing can happen. I should have been foxy like Larkin or Revere and faked a psychosis to stay out of the army. This is where all my effing, I'm editing there, prissy morality gets me, effed, editing again there. What caps it off is this, the aged mediocrity before whom I was regularly brought for interviews has asked me to keep a record of my experience here, a journal. He says he admires the way I write. I have a real gift for words, this aged mediocrity says, ye gods. For over a week, I tried to behave like a proper prisoner of war, name, rank, and social security number. But it's like the hunger strike I attempted way back when I was in the Montgomery jails. People who can't diet four days shouldn't attempt hunger strikes. That's me. So here's your journal, aged asshole. You know what you can do with it. Anyway, I thought that was a good example of his writing. It's a good book but it's not a great book. I like the MD, A Horror Story More. It was written much later in uh, Thomas M. Dish's career. So one would have expected him to have grown as a writer over that time. Um, but, you know, it's a great book. The, the emphasis on alchemy and the twist ending was really entertaining. You know, it, it's definitely something that's worth reading if you like that era of science fiction. Uh, Thomas M. Dish, probably a better writer than most. And that is my Camp Concentration book review. I have more book reviews coming because I've been reading. I haven't felt well enough to make videos, but I have gotten some reading done. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, and again, I'm Randy L. Wright, the literate Texan. I'm not wearing a hat today, but I do have some nice mad scientist hair going. And if you watched all the way through this, I'm extremely grateful. Hope you got something out of it. And I will see you soon, I hope.